And her creatinine was okay, right? So we're in the wrong, in the wrong cusp, and so that makes a huge difference. So. Okay. So I think her coronaries are going to be normal. Okay, Ario. So the other thing that's a little different, I think, in engaging the coronaries compared to what we used to do is, you know, you get very close to the coronaries from the wrist tortoise. as opposed to in the old days from the Juggins no, approach, which is a cat that's dangly out there, and you were very cautious about advancing into the left main. And, um, okay, good. and nowadays, I mean, you, the, the wire is really your friend here towards getting the catheter close to the ostium. Um, I think, you know, this is, again, part of the issue of the equipment we're dealing with now is certainly a lot better than what Melvin Judkins was using. Uh, okay, 25 mag. So, you know, the, not the guide dissections and catheter dissections can't happen, but, uh, you know, as long as you're careful and you quickly, Perfect. you know, hook up the manifold, go to pressure and make sure you're not dampening, it's, it's, it's you don't usually get into much trouble. So then I exchange out with a rosin. So we'll just kind of go down, just floral for a second. Put it in the cusp like that. Again, if I get PVCs, that means that I'm in the ventricle. And I cannot do floral. I'll just back this out. And having that offsite on there holds the sheath, so I'm not worried about that. And boom, boom, we got it. And we will be doing a V-gram, you guys. Are you doing okay? Yeah. Okay. We are too. So your first artery looks beautiful. Uh huh. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. So we're down just a little bit. We'll come back a little bit. There we are. We're going to be nice and axial. And beautiful arteries. Okay, areocranial. Beautiful, AP cranial. Minor stuff, LAO cranial. Good. Beautiful, okay, spider. Okay, AP Cottle. And we got a five French piggy. Big nice Ramus. Try Marge, yep. Okay, so we'll just finish up with a V gram and then we'll go to right heart. And um, we do have the uh, micropuncture stuff, right? Do we have the micropuncture thing for the right heart? Okay. <clears throat> so again, it'd be you know hard for him to do that. Frankly, any faster from the groin, you know, the, the corners, mm -hmm. the corners, and everything else. So. All right. These are five. Yeah, you're using five French catheters, right, Jeff? Yes. Yeah. So. I think the fives are, I find are not that big a deal. I mean, it's I use fours usually. I even I didn't use anything today, but typically for diagnostics, what I've been doing, that does take some getting used to. And um, part of the issue is that you can jet the coronary out of the, the catheter out of the coronary by injecting too hard. So you have to learn how to control your injection a little bit. Um, but having been through a few cases where you do, you can't get bad spasm, and when that happens, it's a bit frustrating because you can't move the catheter. 
And uh, so, you know, a smaller catheter will help you sort of avoid that situation. The typical people who get into spasm are really the, uh, are, are um, uh, smaller people and often that's women, it turns out. Uh, and so the, uh, uh, there are ways around how to deal with that. But when it happens, it's frustrating enough and definitely slows things down. Okay, 30-15, you guys. I don't know what, is it really I usually use an eight. That we have a sort of standard. I usually use the same thing. I, I, what it really when you're using the fours is, you actually don't want to inject hard. You want to inject slowly and then. Well, I mean, to use light so you want to start off slow and then. Uh, and it has to do, I think, with the way it's the viscosity of the blood is in the dye. That it's you know the initially when you're trying to push it up against the blood, it's it pushes the catheter back. Eventually, you know, the laminar flow is going to come out. Okay, Daryl, back at you. The one thing about the fours is that crossing the aortic valve is sort of the bane of your existence. And with the fives, there just seems to be a difference there. That's the one thing I've, I've learned. And so I, that's the one thing I often miss. It's you are going to make you warm all over. Bear with me for just a sec, OK? You're going to get warm. OK, inject, please. Is that bad? Hmm? Yes, it is. So that looks 30 percent-ish, doesn't it, huh? So that's a sort of classic, not, you know. No, it's going to die like cardiomyopathy. Well, the good news is she does have left bundles, so I think uh, you yeah, know we'll we'll maximize her meds and then do CRT on her. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I think we she was first diagnosed as having cardiomyopathy back in uh, 85, 90, something like that. Wow. And then got better, and then got worse. Okay, so let's go with our Rosen. We'll pull this out, and um, then we'll go uh, do the right. So with this wire, I can feel when I'm at the pig. I'm right at the pig right now, so I'll just pull it back over the wire a little bit, and then I can just pull it back. So that, again, saves a little bit of radiation. Right. And even then, if you're unsure, you just get one, one frame just to know where you are. Not having okay. to floor the whole time. All right, so, voila. So we've we've already you done a little you prepping here. The, uh, describe how you set up the uh, the arm there for the right heart there, Jeff. If you so will. we have an IV that's actually in the cephalic vein. Uh -huh. uh, I'd rather it be in the basilic, but it's a better teaching thing. So we may have to navigate a little bit. So we put an IV in. We prepped it. We put a little cap on it. We put some opsite over here. And then we put a other brachial drape here, and I was able to, it was really cool how she did it. And then so we're able to just pull this down, and we're ready to go. So okay. I think what we've been doing lately is folding the brachial drape on top of itself, right? After, as the second yeah. prep, right? Just folding it up this way, and then I can just pull it down right. and cover what I just right. did. Right, and then, and then it's, then uh, the other half of it is covered, and then you pull it back. So you can see this now. Now, the most important thing to do is what you're going to forget to do, and that is to numb it up again. Right. <laughs> right. And I know this woman, and she'd pop me one if I did that, so. <laughs> Little mosquito bite here. Sorry. Oh, just a little bit more. I know, I know. I used to be nice, huh? <laughs> okay. okay, so you got our wire from there. How come it's all bent? So this wire that comes with the micropuncture is nice because it's got a nice stiff member here. We're going we're gonna to put this in, and then I'll take it out, and we'll go in with an 035 wire. So we can't really put our 7 French in, 7 French sheath in under a, a flimsy wire because it just bends. It does, really doesn't work. So hopefully the IV is still in well. And that's good, and that's feeding nicely. So that's a good sign. So the wire goes in nicely, okay. exactly. Yep. So we've got that. And then what I, what I would do here is actually would use one of the glide sheets and just let, just slide it in over this. But he's going to go with the seven French sheath because I guess you want to do thermal dilution. So. Um. Okay. So, so the other that thing goes you can nicely. Do here at this point is give some nitroglycerin if you're going to get in if you want. Okay. O three five wire. I think this O three five actually is really important. I had several cases that kind of the guide wire bent and. It just wasn't satisfying. So we went back to this. 
and now just a standard seven French sheath. Not a glide sheath or anything, just a standard seven French sheath. And sometimes we need to neck the skin a little bit. She's, she's fine. We'll make sure that we're not uh, kinking So the hip lock, yeah, they basically completely it, uh, prepped it up with uh, the beta. Deck. Okay. So. All right, that's good, guys. Let's put yeah. a little towel here, and we're ready for so our cap catheter. Was, the cap is actually sterile when you open it, though, right? So. Yeah, the cap was sterile. We put that on sterile, so. Okay, so. So no balloon up until we're in the thorax. I'm just gonna just feed this gently here and we're probably gonna negotiate this with a little wire, but we'll see how it goes. Well, she just went well. So let's there take a peek. <laughs> All right, so we're here and now we'll go up with our balloon. And it'll be hard to keep it out of the pulmonary artery. Sometimes it wants to go into the atrial appendage, but that's about the only other place you can go. Unless you go across an ASD. There you go. Okay. All right, so we're good there. Should we measure a little pressure here? So no risk of AV fistulae or anything else that you could get by going in a femoral vein. Right. We certainly could do a, 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 a sonocyte guided uh, IJ, which is the standard way to do this. But this is just simple and... Okay, guys. All right, let's put a little filter on that. I want you to take a half a breath in and don't breathe. Stop breathing. Stop breathing. Stop breathing. Stop breathing. Stop breathing. Okay, you can breathe. Good. Good, good. So she's pretty well tuned up. So 45 to 50 for her PA. So is that was the, the mean was 34 there? One more time, take a half a breath in, blow it out, blow it out, don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe. Okay, sweetie, that's fine, good. Yeah. Okay, why don't you guys shoot yeah. some thermals, okay, then do, do a right heart pullback, and, uh, and we're done. Okay, so well, you, the TR you guys don't need to see again, or if, unless you want to. Do you want to see that again? Well, we might as well do it one more time. Let's we'll do that you. one more yeah. time. We'll do that while they're uh, doing the thermals and stuff, okay? okay. And what we may do is, um, are you coming back up here? Or are you, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what we may do is I'll give the talk uh, about the complications, then we'll do the, uh, the anticoagulation sort of roundtable thing up here, all right? All right. So let me, uh, I'll just go ahead and put a TR band on here, and then they're going to hold that with uh, just a little, uh, a little pad, a little hemostatic pad up there. So the key thing is from the right wrist is that you got to turn the TR band around so that you always want it the, the, um, the port where you inject the air into to be on the okay, thumb you side, a weapon for me. assuming you're using the radial artery. If you're using the ulnar, then obviously you turn it around the other way. But uh, you, you want that over the, um, the radial. So if you're on the left side, you have to turn the band around, um, in which case then the, the, the injection point will be pointing up the arm, and the right side will be pointing down the arm towards the thumb. So the other thing is to be cleanly, to, to clean up and everything, so loved ones see that you took care of them well. So we like to wash them off a little bit, get all the blood away. Start a little pullback, does that hurt a little bit? Yeah. So you can see there's just a little kink here in that uh, sheath, and it's just really easy to do right there. And 13 would be great as a start. That's perfect. Double check. So a little more ouch for just a second. We're all done with that, sweetie. 
So I do it a little different. I kind of feel distally for a pulse, and I can feel her pulse come in. So we've got 12 cc's, and we're done. Thank <laughs> you.